video today since we're going to show you how we do meal time. This is my foster Leo. He's here with us for a couple of weeks while he gains weight. The little Ooh. pug is my sister's dog. He's staying with us for the weekend. And this is Takara. Yes. Good girl. Uh, da, 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 da. Good girl. And then there's Akira. She's the first dog that I've had since she was a puppy. And then I adopted Takara when she was about a year old. So this is some of the food station we have. Um, I just picked these up from off the floor. Um, and we are going to feed Leo first because he is a big baby, literally. He is nine months old and he is picky about eating his food. Uh, as you can tell, he has some leg issues there. Come on, Bupus. Come on. Man up. Oh, yeah, you know what this is. Come get the food. Good boy. Come on. Um, so he doesn't know. Man up. Good boy. I've had him about a week now. So we're teaching him go in the kennel because he is not kennel trained. He screams. When he has to be put in there. Come on, Bubba's. Come on. Come on, Leo. Good boy. Hey, a good boy. Yes. Man up. Good boy. Good boy. And he doesn't want to stay in there because he is a big baby. Fine. Well, we are just going to do it the other way. Move, Akira. Go. Go on, good girl. Leo, man up. You, you, you got a man up. Yes, yes. So close. Yeah. Man up, go, man up. Good boy. You know you hungry. He's super underweight, as you can tell. Good boy, good man up. Good boy. So like I said, it's taken us about a week to get to where he will go into the kennel on his own. Uh, you can see, obviously, there's still some reluctance. <laughs> uh, he has to eat laying down because uh, the issues with his legs, his tendons, um, due to whatever he was doing uh, or was at before this, um, he, he walks flat-footed, which is very common with uh, German Shepherds, unfortunately, um, because of bad breeding and genetics. See, look, see, that? oh, yeah, I hope you caught that. But that was Takara warning Gus to go away, because that's her, that's her home. Um, and, and he listened, he go away. Now see, he might come back again because he's pretty oblivious. Pugs are pretty dumb when it comes to warnings. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so yeah, so Leo, he, yeah, he's flat footed. Um, we're hoping with some good nutrition and light exercise that he gets better. Um, he's been playing a lot with the dogs and that's been gradually strengthening up his legs. Um, they're about 10% better than what they were last week. Um, normally I would feed the other dogs, but he is, like I said, a big freaking baby. So if I leave the room or if I feed the other dogs, he gets distracted and will stop eating. And because he's underweight, I don't want that to happen. So uh, we're just gonna pause the video here for a little bit while he eats. Okay, so big baby is done eating. Like I said, super picky. You'll see with the other dogs. So this is what we have, it's called a slow feeder. Um, it helps dogs that um, are aggressive about their food or they eat their food too fast to eat slower because they literally can't eat it as quickly as they can from an open bowl. Um, so Gus Gus is our next dog du jour because he is also picky. <laughs> of all these dogs that... <laughs> 
with your good boy with a good set, guys. Good boy. With a good boy, yes. So, he is a naturally slow eater. If he even eats at all. Usually he's so excited that he doesn't even want to eat because he's literally too excited to eat. So if he eats, I will pause it. But if he doesn't, then I'll just feed mine. Look at him. I swear you think that, like, he thinks I poisoned him or something. No. So, we'll go ahead and we'll start working on the other pups. Too. So, like I said, I have different kind of slow feed bowls. Um, these are also ones that you can get which are interactive, like dog toys, basically. You put the food in there, they have to get it out from there. Um, all enhanced eating techniques um, because it helps them to, what do we say, um, not devour the food so fast. It's more of an experience. It's, they're just rushing through it. Uh, you'll see it when Takara eats her food that this does not slow her down in the slightest. So we have Kira's food and Takara's. Uh, Kira gets about a cup and three fourths. And then Takara gets per day, I should say. Um, and then Takara, she is right now on a diet um, because she's getting a little chunky. We're not doing as many walks as normal. So I've been supplementing her food with beans. Great way for her to feel full and without all of the food. So that's what she's getting. Uh, as I mentioned in my post, neither one of my dogs are food aggressive in the least. Akira, a little bit more if it's like puppies or uh, uh, a rude dog, you know, that's pushy, something like that. Um, but Takara is absolutely not food aggressive at all. Um, so she's actually really, really good, uh, around other dogs. She'll let them eat from her bowl. She'll want to eat from their bowl, which is <laughs> not always appreciated by the other dogs. So, uh, wait. So I always have them sitting in a certain spot. Akira's kind of loose right now because we have so many extras here today. Um, but I always have them sitting um, and or laying down and they have to wait. Uh, sometimes I wait, made them, make them wait a little bit. Sometimes it's a long bit. Just depends on how I'm feeling. Um, but it's very, very rare that I will just let them dig into their food immediately. Um, and they both learn uh, to do that pretty quickly. Um, but how I started off doing that, wait, is what I would do is when I would start to lower the food, most dogs will try to lunge for it. Um, so I would put my hand in front of the bowl holding on to it like that and I would start to lower it and as soon as they would lunge for it or left their position of a sit I would straighten up and if they kept coming towards me I would step back who goes back on the counter um and it, they learn <laughs> real quick oh jeepers if I don't keep my butt on the floor I my food goes away oh my goodness Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, 
So, but that's what I would do is I would just lean it down and eventually you can get to the point where you sit it down. Uh, <laughs> you're so sad. <laughs> I would set it down and I would set it down between my legs because my legs say I own this. Like my slippers. This says I own it. You don't act. Ah. I own this, you don't. And again, still having to say. Oh, I hope you don't spill that. He's so clumsy. So, um, in fact, I'm going to take that. Uh, no. Just the whole thing. Anyways. Um, so, yeah. So then, gradually, I would say the key word and I would slide it toward them with my foot. Um, and it just got to be, um, like I said, you do that every day, twice a day for a month. Uh, she learned it and probably, oh, I wanna say maybe three days. <laughs> uh, but if you did that every day for a month, even the most hard headed it did, uh, ness of dogs um, will learn it and and as you know other dogs get to pass by it uh, it helps to have Gus here as our example because he literally doesn't care about food um, but if I had say a puppy or another dog that was more excited um, even a dog that's not necessarily aggressive or um, trying to get at the food and it's just being playful running around I put up a baby gate right here put up a baby gate right there and um, they got to stay behind it um, because it's very intense for them to control themselves to have to be in a sit or a lay uh, lay is more intense and for their food to be there and then another dog to be here that's like the ultimate in obedience and control. Um, like I said, Tagar is great with it, so she doesn't care. Now, go back. You're so weird. Uh, so when you first try that out, I would not even have the other dog be around. Not in the same room, just completely out of sight, out of mind, so you can just focus on one thing at a time to gradually step up the uh, control of food. So I said I would slide it across, but now she knows that she's not supposed to eat it until I say the word and I'm not gonna say the word. This is a care. Care is great with this too. Um, she has no problem. Wait, um, she's also another hesitant eater. So it, I usually don't even have to tell her wait, um, but she's good with it as well. So, um, and see how she's focused on me, not her food. That is what you eventually want to accomplish where another dog can come up, sniff the food, but they're waiting on their command. So it doesn't really matter. But even in that situation, if she were to growl or show her teeth at Gus, she would be 100% justified. Um, because it's not his food. He's got his food bowl over there. And he's just being a big goofball about it. So, um, I'll let you see. Uh, <laughs> because she's been waiting so patiently. And we're going to say our word and you'll see how quickly... They eat their food. Patience! So, um, I said, so they know that I'm in control of their food. Gus, get, get, get out, get, bruh. They know that I control the food, not another dog, not themselves, um, you know, me. So if I say, yes, you can have it, they can have it. If I say, no, you can't, no, you can't. Eventually, you want to get to the point 
where you can put your hand down and they go back into the sit. Good patience, good girl. Um, but you start that off with first petting them uh, on their butt. <laughs> uh, good girl, yeah, she's a good girl. First petting them like on their butt or even tapping them on their leg. Um, and then eventually you can graduate to where, uh, you know, you can take their food bowl away and put it back down. Um, but, you know, Gus, if you don't get out of her booty, goodness, go on, Gus. Good boy. So, um, obviously with doing this with their meals, it's a pretty quick way <laughs> to get some obedience going. Uh, it stretches their brain, uh, helps them to be less bored and thus less cranky. Um, a lot of times dogs are cranky because they are bored. They are irritable because they are bored. Not because they don't have a backyard, um, but because they are bored. Nothing is going on in their life that's interesting. They're, they eat their food the same way, in the same method. Gus, thank you. Good gravy. Um, so doing games, teaching them tricks, um, putting their food in bowls or different containers for them to eat from, um, dr t going on drives. I know right now, I, you know it, not your food. Oh, Gus did eat a little good. Good girl. <laughs> like I said, she thinks she can eat from everybody's bowl. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, is going for a drive. You know, even if you don't get out the car, just going for a drive helps with all of that. Um, it took me probably... Like I said, it was quite a while um, before I would let them eat freely. Thank you. Now, see, all of that, that's a big test to a cure. I mean, food bowl is empty, but just, whoa, 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 hang on. on. Is just having other dogs around her, sniffing her, sniffing her bowl while she's eating. That's a big, 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 giant test. Like, huge. Um, anytime it comes to food, anything is a tip. Ah, the, the little girl. I swear. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, sprinkling food out can be less uh, possessive if you find that they're possessive about food bowls. Um, but I just leave the bowls out. They're empty. Sniff them all day. Ain't nothing in there. So if you can make it so that they're not possessive about the food bowl, then you can scatter food around. You know, just loose dog food. And go on. it's not even a thing because, hey, you know, there's food everywhere. You know, dumped out on the ground. So, anyways, I hope this gives you some ideas on how to blend together dogs eating. Uh, like I said, that's probably the hardest thing uh, for, for dogs to learn and be okay with. Um, but it's totally possible. And, uh, like I said, because it challenges their mind, dogs enjoy it. They're happy to do it. Um... As you saw, I mean, <laughs> if if the dog didn't want to do it, I, she, she would just not do it. <laughs> you know, uh, some people do think that it's cruel and it's uh, uh, not ethical. Um, however, it really strengthens, I find, uh, the bond between you and the dog. Um, it really helps them see that you are the one that's going to take care of them, protect them, feed them. Um, they can relax because they don't have to be on the hunt for food. They know that you're going to provide it for them. Um, 
so I don't look at it as something cruel um, because ultimately if they didn't want to do it they would yeah you want to play fetch here this is our last thing before we go oh my goodness ready ready oh what a good set Leo ready Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great example of, of a brow. <laughs> now keep in mind, Takara is not possessive at all about toys or balls with people, with other dogs having it or other people having it. But she growled at Leo because she was like, no, nah. no, nah, bruh, it's mine. Back off. Totally back off. And other times, they will totally play fight over it. We do good puppies. Yeah. But see, even though he's big, he is nine months old. He is a baby. Come here, Takara. What are you doing? Where's your ball? Where's your ball? Yes. Good girl. Bring it here. Come on. Good girl. Look at that good girl. Oh, yes. You're being so good. You're being so good. You're being so good. Yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, but see that? She's like, no, mine. But see, her body's still relaxed, tail still wagging, ears back. Now, that is much different from her playground. It's very different. <laughs> uh, it's in a different tone, it's in a different context. Uh, it is very different. <laughs> um, and what's so remarkable is that the dogs instantly know which one it is. Um, Leo knows if she's just playing with him or if she's for real and she's actually telling him to back off. Yeah? Good girl. Look at that good girl. Look at that good girl. Yeah? What did you just... Leo. Oh. No, no, no. Did the long video. Oops. <laughs>